database, data warehouse, data lake. Do you keep hearing these terms thrown around but don't know the difference between them and why you would choose one versus another? My name is Devin Knight, and in today's video, I'm gonna explore the differences between these three different data storage solutions and help you understand how each are unique and each have their own application. There's not really a right or wrong answer on which one you'll choose, it's just gonna depend on the different scenarios and we'll talk about the pros and cons of each. First, so let's talk about databases. Now imagine you work at a grocery store and every time a customer comes up to the register, you have a cashier that scans each item across the belt, right? And they scan each individual item and a new record is created that's stored in a database for each item, each transaction that happens when they're scanned across that belt. So a database is a structured collection of data stored electronically. Typically they're organized into tables with rows and columns, and it's like a digital ledger that keeps track of all the transactions that you have. Databases are designed for online transactional processing, or you'll sometimes hear the acronym OLTP. That means they handle real-time transactions and operations really efficiently. As another example here, let's say that you are making an online purchase. The transaction that you make at an online store is immediately recorded into a database. Now there's two types of databases, relational and non-relational databases like MySQL, Oracle, store data in structured tables with fixed columns and rows, while non-relational databases, also known as NoSQL databases, often are more flexible. By accommodating various data models such as JSON or semi-structured data and allow you to have these kind of key value pairs for simple data retrieval. So again, two different types, not super important that you dig too deep into the different types, but just know that there are various types of databases that are used for storing data. Some common examples of databases include Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, PostgreSQL, or MongoDB. So now that you know what a database is, and the database is traditionally gonna be more for transactional use, let's now talk about what a data warehouse is. So imagine you own a chain of grocery stores again, and you wanna be able to analyze sales trends over time, you wanna be able to build out reports and dashboards. Well, a data warehouse is like a specialized database designed for storing structured information from multiple sources, optimized for online analytical processing, or sometimes referred to as OLAP. Now, a data warehouse is going to be specifically designed for that report development. So the end result of a data warehouse is you're going to have some reports using various tools. It could be Microsoft Power BI or others, but it's going to be sitting on top of the data found in a data warehouse, which has been organized for the purposes of building reports. So data warehouses are used for analytical purposes. They consolidate data from different systems to facilitate comprehensive analysis, uncover insights, and generate business intelligence. Think of it as a giant filing cabinet where you store summarized data from all of your stores to analyze sales trends and make strategic decisions. That's ultimately what we wanna do with our data, right? Is use it for decision making. And data warehouses help you do that in an easy to understand format. So the process of moving data into a data warehouse is managed through this process known as extract, transform, and load. Sometimes you'll hear the acronym ETL. There's also another thought process around doing things like ELT, just the same acronym in a different order, extract, load, transform. But this means that data is extracted from its original source, transformed to fit the warehouse schema, or basically a design of how the data is going to be stored, and then load it into the warehouse on a regular basis, which could be daily, weekly, or even multiple times a day, potentially. Some examples of a data warehouse might be something like Azure Synapse, that's Microsoft's product, but there are other products that Amazon has, Google has, Snowflake is a popular one, IBM has DB2 warehouses. So there's lots of different tools out there that help work with data warehousing design. One of the common methodologies that you'll hear around designing a data warehouse is Ralph Kimball's design. You'll hear Kimball design. You'll also hear things like star schema. Those are common ways of being able to design your data warehouse to, again, organize it for the purposes of reporting. So when you think of data warehouse, think of analytics, reporting. That's the final result of what you're going to do with the data warehouse. Now let's talk about data lakes. This is one element of data storage that has many confused. Now imagine you have a junk drawer. Everybody's got a junk drawer in their kitchen, right? And you, that's where you just toss all your things, like old receipts, keys, pens, random gadgets that you have. A data lake is kind of similar to that. It is a centralized storage repository for data collected from various sources, preserving it in its original or raw format. So whereas a database stores things in more of a structured format, 
A data warehouse is even more structured where things are put into this like star schema design. Data lakes handle things a little differently. So data lakes handle a diverse data formats, including structured, semi-structured, unstructured data. And they're ideal for advanced analytics, machine learning and AI. Unlike databases and data warehouses, data lakes allow storing data without immediately structuring it, enabling exploration and analysis of raw data. So you're seeing a lot of data scientists like to connect into the data lake so they don't have to wait necessarily for a business intelligence team to be able to organize the data in a certain format. And keep in mind, there's lots of examples of data lakes that are out there. Uh, Amazon has their own. Microsoft has Azure Data Lake Storage. Google has their own version as well. So there's lots of different ways. In addition to thinking about data lakes, Microsoft has introduced a few advancements on the idea of data lake. You have things like One Lake and a data lake house that further the idea of data lakes. One Lake is a unified, logical data lake for your entire organization, included with every Microsoft Fabric tenant. And it supports multiple analytical engines and open formats, making collaboration easier and more efficient. So think of uh, the idea of One Lake is making it easier to connect into Microsoft products. That's the big difference between Data Lake and One Lake. You'll oftentimes hear the analogy of One Lake being like OneDrive. That's true, uh, but it's like OneDrive in that it easily connects into all sorts of Microsoft products. So when you think of OneDrive, it connects really easily where you're saving Word documents and Excel documents. You'll always see it there where you can save to OneDrive. Same kind of idea with One Lake. It's going to interconnect into Microsoft products a lot easier than just general uh, data lakes. Data Lakehouse combines the flexibility and cost efficiency of data lakes with the data management and acid transactions of data warehouses. We're not going to get too deep into acid transactions into this video, but just note that it's kind of combining the best of both worlds, the ability to have unstructured data, but then also put some structure on top of it, which is what you get with that data warehouse that many of you may be familiar with. So this hybrid approach enables business intelligence and machine learning on all data, providing a single system for both structured and unstructured data. Now let's discuss when you should choose each data storage method. It's important to note that not one method is really better than the others. Rather, you should choose the right tool for the job. Each scenario may lend itself to a different type or kind of storage method. Use a database when you need to handle day-to-day -day transactions and operational efficiency. So for example, if you're running an online store, a database is a perfect place to record every purchase and keep track of transactions and inventory in real time. You're going to choose a data warehouse when you need to analyze large amounts of historical data and generate business insights. So think of your BI tool is typically going to be placed on top of a data warehouse for doing those reporting and dashboarding needs. Now, you may opt for a data lake when you need to store large volumes of diverse data for future analysis. So if you have a mix of structured and unstructured data, such as customer feedback from social media, videos, documents, a data lake really provides the flexibility to store everything in a raw form and analyze it later. So remember, the key to selecting the right tool for your specific needs is, in fact, many organizations use a combination of data storage methods. You might use databases, data warehouses, data lakes to address different requirements. So there's not really, again, one tool for the job that must always be used. Now, we explore some of these things in our on-demand learning at Pragmatic Works. We have many different courses on data warehousing, databases, data lakes. Make sure you take a look at our on-demand learning to learn more about why you would choose one of these tools over the other in our subscription-based model. So make sure you take a look at that. To wrap up, each data storage solution has its unique strengths and applications. And understanding the differences between databases, data warehouses, and data lakes will help you choose the right tool for your specific needs. Thank you for watching today. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe. Make sure to hit that notification bell so you know when we have new videos that have come up and you can stay informed on the content that we have at Pragmatic Works. Again, thank you so much for watching today and we'll see you in our next one.